research, so none left discussed, is also the responsibility that civil society and citizens have right now and also could have in the future. Uh, and for me, that's really where I think the breaking point is, really where I think the EU really could fly, uh, when the European citizens really do understand, believe in it, and really participate uh, in supporting also the, the European vision, so to speak. So no, thank you very much for those uh, reflections. Uh, we're going to stick with the cultural uh, theme uh, right now. Uh, and it's really an honor and a pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who I have the pleasure of meeting also for the first time today, uh, even though I've been admiring his work for some time, uh, Mr. Paul Dujardin. He is the artistic director of the Center for Fine Arts in Brussels. Uh, so a man, really, who I think has had the chance from the theory and the practice to think about these issues, the significance that culture can have uh, in transcending borders and beyond. Just to say a few words about his background, Mr. Dujardin studied the history of art and archaeology in Brussels and also holds a master's degree in management. He has worked as an assistant to the Secretary General of the International Federation of Musical Youth, helping to promote youth musicians throughout the world. Mr. Dujardin was one of the founders of Ars Musica, one of the biggest Belgian contemporary music festivals, and from 1992 until 2002 served as the general manager of the Brussels Philharmonic Society. Since 2002, he has worked as the artistic director for the Centre for Fine Arts in Brussels. Please join me in a very, very warm welcome for Mr. Paul Dujardin. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I didn't know that to see this assembly here in, uh, in this building of the, the commission. So I would be very honored to be only the artistic director of uh, the Palais de Beaux-Arts. Uh, as you know, uh, cultural diplomacy and uh, cultural management is uh, something more than only to be involved in the uh, programming. Uh, Bozar is, is a, a major institution and a major federal institution for these who living in Brussels or living in Belgium. Uh, it was important to give some, some references. It was built by uh, the civil society uh, and not by public uh, funding. It was a, it's, not, it's, a, it's a really private initiative after the first war. Uh, it's uh, unique and it became a reference of cultural diplomacy after the first war. No war again. Uh, you know the first war was um, Flanders Fields, uh, very important. We will commemorate it in the coming two years. Even for that reason, more than 100, 150 chiefs of states will come to Belgium in 2014, 15 to commemorate this first war. Same time, other events were organized and structured, like La Cité Universitaire in Paris, to give another example. Uh, it's a 35, 33, 35,000 square meter building, uh, and it, uh, the idea was uh, not to collect, but to have a platform. A platform to bring all the arts together, uh, international dialogue was visionary at the time and opened the first exhibition with uh, Russian avant-garde in 1928, the last year where during the Bolshevist time Russian intellectual could leave the country before the country borders were closed. It's a, it's a place from, for reflection and, uh, and, and a platform uh, that we created with more than 250 partners and uh, it's uh, all the different disciplines are presented in that building. It's a major concert hall, uh, there's a, a cinema, theater um, and I would say since I'm involved the last years we, we were trying to see how in a European context uh, of organi organizing uh, type of festivals who were very important in uh, European um, um, history from the last 20-30 years. I would say that as you remember it's recent history in the 70s um, after the uh, dictatorship of uh, fascism in Spain after the king came back after the generals in the 70s uh, in uh, Portugal uh, in Greece uh, all these uh, different uh, countries who became member of the European Union, they, ha they wanted to, to present themselves in their cultural identity. And uh, major festivals were organized 
and we created a, a structure who became uh, a, a platform under the, under the umbrella of Europalia, was presenting these European countries. You have to put yourself in the 70s, even 70s, it was for Belgium a taboo to go on holidays, for example, to Germany, the dialogue to go and visit. We, we, it was really the beginning, 60s, 70s, of middle class, uh, way of mass tourism, and to go on, on holidays, visiting another culture, entering another a way of seeing another country, have a respect of. And so Spain at the time, like the Polish presidency with the uh, major crowd, I, culture, in the, during this presidency of Poland, Spain started. And today, if you speak with any director of a museum or cultural institution or public administration, this cultural event of the 70s in Brussels was one of the major, major cultural events Spain ever did at that time. So, and, and came after that Greece and, 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 and uh, Portugal and all the, all, the other, all the other 27 countries were presenting themselves. And 21 years ago, when the wall went down, the major um, uh, new member states, we still say the 10 last member states of Central Europe were integrated. At the same time, uh, we went more from a bilateral reality to a multilateral reality uh, since the last 30, 30, 30 years uh, with other festivals like uh, Visionary Africa. Why? Because Belgium has a relation with uh, Congo and we at the 50th anniversary of Congo last year. But instead to do a festival on Congo, our main idea was in that multilateral diplomacy with Brussels to create a triangle and presenting the 22 countries who were firing their independence. So not only Congo, but having a platform and bringing a platform for Africa in the African-European relations. And so our uh, Belgian commissioner, uh, Louis Michel, who uh, invited to Brussels all the ministers for development and culture from Europe and Africa who came here to Brussels for the Brussels Agreement. And the Brussels Agreement on that relationship between Europe and Africa, what we can give back, how cultural science, research and technology would help the development of that continent. So Boza was trying to bring together in one platform different elements of that policy, not only cultural heritage, but also all what to do with living art today, but also civil society topics, women issues, having also aspect of linguistic, communication, and having all to do with creative economy, cultural industries. So we start with a major project and we always forget that North Africa or countries like Egypt are member of the African Union. So it was important that in the African capital, in Addis Abeba, with the African Union, a dialogue was started on that third pillar, which is the people-to-people -people, uh, policy, and very important because the African continent seen as too much as the, the lost continent, and in the creative economy, cultural industries, so important to have them with us. So even uh, China, South Africa, uh, have other projects like Daniel Barenboim with his West Defense Orchestra, receive platforms at the Palais de Beaux-Arts. So we will have a, a very important program for the coming years uh, on other regions of the world. And uh, it can only reinforce our Belgian diplomacy with a really independent platform. So it's not propaganda, it's really, you have the, the politics, political reality, you have diplomacy, and you have then that really independent platform who can be an uh, institution as the Palais Beaux Arts on the level of Belgium, on the level of the European reality, and taking care about what is our more Europe we have, our more regional Europe we have. And that's the reality of Belgium, who is in a tunnel. We just have, as you know, a new government. And that what is the main issue of Belgium is having a very good balance between regional uh, priorities, the federal state, because Belgium is a federal state, 
And the fellow state is, for me, still the aspect of a nation, two persons, solidarity with the region. And then the third level, a democratic Europe with one day maybe an elected president. So culture in the EU external relations uh, is maybe the most important issue of also the seminar of today. And a great number of initiatives existed, but they have to more, there must be an increasing of, of interest of that. And we can, we can say that that started really since the Lisbon agreements. And the UNESCO conventions was already in that way of promoting cultural diversity. Uh, the, the cultural agenda of the Commission started these first external relations we have today. We know about the film festivals. We, we have in the more than 150, 160 delegations outside Europe uh, a certain number of initiatives, but as we know, the uh, subsidiarity of Europe was make that, making that external relations were not competent for all these different uh, initiatives. So we, we saw the last years already some uh, uh, cultural corporations on the level of Media Mundus, the uh, ACP cultural program, the Eastern Partnership cultural program, and we see there's a new interest in the Euromed reality. Uh, last week again, uh, an increasing budget was foreseen for the Annalyn Foundation. The Annalyn Foundation is that umbrella you have in Alexandria with uh, uh, a coordinator from all the NGOs in the cultural field, in the dialogue between Europe and the Mediterranean world. It's in something there's a real interest. It's not depending on Mrs. Facilio, it's depending on new member states and the whole Mediterranean area who is uh, uh, led by Communist Fuller. Communist, uh, we can say that about 200 million euros is invested to cultural cooperation uh, to uh, the external uh, countries outside Europe and it's still, we could say, a too low amount. There is something going on but we have really to to increase this, this budget, and that, that has to be done in the uh, new service of uh, external action of European uh, level. Uh, so we would like to have that, and, and uh, uh, yesterday night even we had the first seminar in, in the Palais de Beaux-Arts with the slogan of More Europe, where we brought together a great number of different uh, cultural actors from the civil society today, foundations like the British Council, Goethe Institute, who will have, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, will be have a strategic action in the coming year, starting in Brussels uh, these days, for one year to have really a discourse to the different 27 EU countries on these different uh, uh, topics. And yesterday, Mr. Villemont, who is uh, working at the External Affairs, was speaking about uh, uh, more Europe, and he was saying we have, in a certain way, uh, we could say that it was pragmatic. Uh, we have to be realistic. Like I said, subsidiarity. Member states didn't like to talk about culture. That was the reality of the last 20, 30 years, because the Treaty of Rome, Rome was a totally out of context. So culture was not the first priority. And again, after a better period of the 80s and 90s, where each of the countries was more developing its own cultural identity, you have to remember that the 10 new member states in the 90s, it was much to do more with the identity of, of uh, and that's the big difference with Poland today, as a member of the European Union, you feel that the cultural diversity of Spain uh, with the last two governments of Zapatero and the, uh, the, the bombing in Madrid, the relations was much more to do with cultural diversity, cultural dialogue, and we could see today uh, that 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 open-minded reality of the last years could come back again to a more strict personal identity. We could see it in Spain, 
uh, and I hope it will not be that reality because we feel also that by the financial crisis, budgets are cut and it has, must say, a positive influence in the negative reality that different countries are really trying to convince the Commission, to convince the Council, to convince external relations that working together, for example, countries as Austria and Denmark, were really proposing, let's work together. Because today, you have all these cultural centers doing a, a cultural policy outside Europe in their own way. Uh, Alliance Francaise, the Goethe Institute, British Council, most of the European countries have these cultural centers outside of Europe. The last five years, they started to work together on the one umbrella in Brussels. They started here 10 years ago to work all together and to have a European lobby. Now, a days, outside Europe, you have all these different uh, cultural centers are more and more working together. But we think that we have to keep it at one side, but at the other side, to have one cultural policy is something we have really uh, to defend. I think that in the cultural dip diplomacy and the arts, uh, a dialogue with the citizens is a really priority. Cultural diplomacy is, in, my, in our opinion, is about people, is about individuals. It's really linked to values, to dreams, to hopes, and indeed culture. And uh, reading in the newspapers from the last days with our new government, uh, I would say the idea of listening and learning building relations, our former Minister of Foreign Affairs, who became the new Minister of Finance, by the way, Steven Van Acker, said to his successor Didier Reynes, the new Minister of Foreign Affairs, I would recommend you not to forget that we all have two ears and only one mouth, and that's because we have to listen twice as well. In diplomacy, this is of in, 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 in very important situation to listen and not only to speak. It's not about imposing your worldview abroad. Europe as a former colonizer. And we don't want the idea of a clash, provoking, but an exchange. Respect is crucial. And in that way, Bozar again, we have some experiences that we can exchange. We did a you know, uh, in that frame of Europalia, the bilateral state-to-state -state cultural exchange, and we have it everywhere. France in Russia, Russia in France, France in Brazil, Brazil in, in, in France. We did a, a major uh, bilateral exchange with China and Belgium. But as you know, in the partner, partnership countries uh, with Europe, you have uh, India, you have uh, China, Australia, Canada, and you have the uh, year of the youth with China, uh, you have the cultural year next year with China, and we decided uh, to propose to the European Union in the frame of the European bilateral tradition to go this this more European reality, that we were convinced to have a better balanced programs, and not to export mostly what the French do and did to go to Russia with their artworks, or the Russians came to Paris. The idea is to conceive equal projects that you can do even in Brussels, in Europe, as outside. It could be in Washington and in Brussels, and thinking on, after the Second War, migration of brains to America, and how these brains influence, again, Europe. How to do common projects between the United States and Europe, between Europe and China, between Europe and Africa, how is influence, the influence on our reality, daily reality, on culture, on language, on civil society, on all these levels. And we did it. We did four major exhibitions in China on all these cultural exchange in the Forbidden City, in the National Gallery, and we invited the major artists who were excluded and censored by the Tiananmen events 20 years ago. And we were convinced that we had to reintegrate Chinese intellectuals, and we said to the Chinese, and it was really 
diplomacy, we had to go many times to China to discuss with the authorities that it was possible to show their best artists. They didn't accept to, sh to give them the platform in Brussels without provocation. There's a difference to show and not to be provocative without censorship. And we did. And the Chinese were convinced and the curator was at the time Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei is maybe today uh, the most important official internal China dissident and at the same time uh, very proud to be Chinese and at the same time provocative in his country. Three years ago we asked him to do that work without provocation. Uh, maybe uh, we, it went very well, it was a dialogue, it was in Boza, it was in Beijing, it was very successful to the new generation and we had to show it firstly here. We could convince the Chinese that we could do cultural exchange on a very high level, on an independent way, without censorship, in the official buildings in China. That it is possible. Without, and, and that we can do it in a dialogue with the cultural world, with official ins institutions, and the cultural ministry in China. So it happened in Brussels and in Beijing, and it was really successful, uh, and we hope to go on. Uh, Mrs. Fasilio was in China a month ago, and we hope that in February at Boza we'll do a special exchange because the Chinese authorities decided to build more than a dozen Confucius institutions in Europe, and they're putting a lot of pressure on our institutions, Europe, uh, to enlarge the uh, contract uh, and the partnership between EU China and not only to have agreements on foreign affairs, on economic relations, but also on cultural relations. And so the pressure on the European Union will be that the cultural agenda will have to be enlarged and that Europe has to invest to have, again, a balanced situation. What the Chinese are convinced that they find an unbalanced situation you have today in, in the arts, in the science, in the research, 10 students from China in Europe and one European student in China. And so it's important to find a new balanced way to that China and today a um, uh, richer China and uh, it's not, uh, you feel it also in the government, we have to invest to make people happy in a new economic development, it's not only with economic development, but also with cultural development. And so the Chinese authorities do understand they will have to invest not only in education, in science, but also in, in culture. A new role for arts, for art centers, and that's what I'm doing here. We try, since I'm involved in Boza, to come back to the origin. What can a major art center do in that, in that work? Uh, uh, it's to be more and more, I would say, intercultural, multicultural. It's not a, a platform for Belgian artists. The quality is there when you make an exchange between the local, international artists and to invite. You make a certain competition, and in that way, there's a dialogue to bring these artists together. It's really uh, increasing the flux of. Uh, migration and, and dialogue uh, between artists and, and audience. And today, 1.3 million people comes to Beaux-Arts in Brussels in a small city. We will never be Paris. We are not London, cultural capital of the world. We could say Paris uh, with, with its big interest. But Brussels as a political capital can also be a cultural capital by this high potential reality of Brussels, of the Greatest, well, the, the largest number of diplomats, journalists, you have a potential of lobbyists, about 200,000 people living in Brussels, and the success of Bozar is also that element, having uh, Bozar in Brussels, uh, capital of Europe. But it's very important also in the new European program to have this type of platforms of exchange inside Europe, in the different cultural um, uh, industries. Since the 16th century, Frankfurt Book Fair is the most important book fair in the world. The Venice Biennial, the film Biennial from Venice and Cannes and Berlin, all these different platforms, long time before Europe was existing in the political structure we have today, were already there. 
So the idea is to make more platforms in the different arts fields to have a dialogue inside Europe and outside Europe and, and to, wo to, to work more on a structural way. The role of uh, to support policy actions and it's important to see that that there is an increasing reality on, on in between in the diplomacy today in this global world. It's important that in this diplomatic reality, the soft power can play a very important role. And I was referring to China, but I can do it to Turkey. Turkish authorities, Erdogan, decided to open a very important culture center in Brussels for language and culture. It will do it all over the place. Uh, the, the most increasing uh, activity in culture and tourism today is not China and India or America, it's Turkey today, the last figures. A very increasing, you go to Istanbul today, you see uh, a religious cultural tourism from high quality, from Central Asia to Istanbul today. So the Erdogan is referring back, there's a very important book written by the uh, actual Minister of Foreign Affairs, inspiring Turkey to find its Ottoman roots back and, and, and giving a moral obligation to the Turkish communities outside, outside Turkey to restore their cultural heritage in the Balkan and all over the place. So you see that what were the Americans doing to Europe in the 60s, 70s by form of propaganda but also with a soft power, the same way the Turks are doing also in Brussels and all over the place, the Mediterranean world, and who was uh, present and was the only one who was speaking about culture was on the last uh, EU-African summit in Tripoli. I was there, there was only one person in, in, uh, at the uh, assembly. Uh, the first who could speak was not a European leader, was not an African leader, Mr. Gaddafi, who was sharing still that event, was inviting Erdogan to speak. And he was the only one who was speaking about culture. And the most uh, investors, to the, the most important investments in the whole North Africa reality scene are the Turks today, not only by real estate and investing in new buildings, but also in culture. You see the same with the Russians. The Russians opened in our universities a new important Russian, uh, Russian language library. So also the, the, the president of Russia decided to open Russian cultural sense outside. So very important reality of that balanced dialogue between Europe and all these member states. Some are member of the, uh, uh, the European uh, uh, reality, eh? not member of the European, because we, when you go on our website of foreign affairs, Turkey is an European country, as Russia is in this European reality of cultural realities. So in that uh, uh, context, uh, the partnership with art centers, and, and it come maybe back to, to Africa, we balance very well to work with the civil society. In the Larkin uh, agreement during the Belgian presidency of Europe, seven years ago, I think, a very important agreement was signed for the Larkin agreement on the relations with civil society. And not only to give the support of development in the Millennium Goals to the countries, but to the civil society. So we brought to Brussels 20 different institutions from Africa who were involved in the arts, independent platforms. In, for example, Lumabashi, you have an important museum, contemporary art museum for women. We invited them to Brussels, from Lagos, from uh, Cairo, from Rabat. All different institutions came to Brussels to have a dialogue. Because it's, as you know, for Africa, the mobility and integration, what was the, the element of the summit in Tripoli, is that it's easier to have a dialogue with your, con uh, your neighbor country through Paris or through Brussels or to London than, than having a regional dialogue in Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa by the reality of, 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 uh, of the actual political 
instability or the, the absence of uh, roads and so on. So infrastructure works are very important to make dialogue between different communities. And the image on that you create is so important in these different uh, projects. So a major new project that Bozar will take up is engaging Egypt. Uh, before the revolution, we decided to start this project and, and to have a platform on all the Mediterranean world. Because I remember the president of Europe, Herman Van Rompuy, started his, uh, his uh, discourse in uh, a presentation in, in, in Tripoli on the idea Mara, Mare Nostra. Uh, what's our, we're always presenting what make the differences. What we have to show is what is complementary, what are the, the elements who bring our cultures together, where we feel that we have the same, the same roots. And certainly the whole Mediterranean world, each of these countries had a, in a certain period a leadership. So Bozar was bringing together the last two years the major platforms in Europe who has and were created by the national institutions. For example, the IMA, Institut du Monde Arabe in Paris, the Casa Arabe in Madrid, the Deutsche uh, Arabische Gesellschaft. All these different countries had in a certain way relations with the Mediterranean and Arab world. And instead to have these specificities of bilateral relations, the French were mostly linked to their French-speaking countries in the Arab world. So having these different members around the table today is a totally other context of the European reality to bring this together and to have a dialogue with the whole Mediterranean world, what, for example, the Annalyn Foundation has to do uh, from Alexandria today, where there was a competition between the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, to have the headquarters somewhere in Portugal, Spain or France. And I'm very happy that finally the Commission decided we will bring that institution in Alexandria. It was very criticized, always like bureaucratic entities. It's a reality, but I think that today, um, that with the head of two Catalans, the director of, of the Anna Lind is a Catalan uh, who started with the European Mediter Mediterranean Institute in Barcelona, left the institute, was, is a reference today of dialogue between the Mediterranean world and the Arab world with that Anna Lind Institute. So Bozar decided that we will start with an Egyptian partnership. Uh, I have to go this weekend to sign the final convention. The European Union will invest around 5 million euros to the Alexander Library, to the Anna Lind Foundation, and to Bozar. And it was strange to see that the European Commission was saying, we have to invest in development infrastructure in Egypt. And the Egyptians decided, uh, we have to be present with an Europalia in Brussels. In certain way, it was two different visions. The Egyptians want to be here, and the Europe Europeans want to be there. What we decided to bring everybody together and to find a way that Egypt is not only a country with identity we're giving to them from camels and pyramids. It's always their choice in the promotion from the last 10, 20 years. In February, the most, just after the revolution, there was the greatest number of tourists ever from Belgium who were on holidays in Egypt. In all these hotels, but not to visit Egypt, only to go on holidays there for the sun and the pyramids and the camels. And the idea was how making a new identity after the revolution, after the post nazar and the pan-Arabian reality there, it was important to have a new reality on their own identity. So we will create a platform with the Egyptians, with Europe, and for the reason of stability, we start this project in 12, 13, and 14, but 14 will be the first project in Egypt. We invite already in, in January, the Festival of Cairo is the major film festival for the Arab world to show in Brussels to all the European entities and the Belgians and European realities, all the materials of the revolution because most of the filmmakers stopped to film professionally the last year, but they were bringing enormous contents of interesting information about what's going on there. And it was interesting yesterday that Leila Shahid, 
who is for many years the representative of the Palestine community in Brussels, said very nicely, when she came to France as an ambassador, nobody and the negative impression of Palestine was so negative. And so she was like in a desert. And she said, I wanted to create an oasis in the desert of Europe, knowing better my culture. And she decided to, be, to organize a big cultural festival in Paris on the Palestine region and with Palestine artists, but also with other artists. And so it had such an impact in Paris. And she did again the same project in Brussels. And it was incredible how also the Arab Liga, when they came to Brussels, that they were conscious that speaking in the dialogue with Europe was more than speaking about political stability and economic development. Cultural issues were so important. So that was that third pillar again that Leah Shahid was presenting yesterday as a good example to Mr. Villemont and all the other members of the external relations. And for uh, Pierre Villemont also yesterday, he said the Arab Spring was an important warning for Europe. It will hopefully prevent Europeans to be too arrogant. We have to learn to be more humble. We have to discover that we are indeed living in a global, globalizing world. There are other countries who are offering their help. We have to promote ideas in a far more competitive world. Because it was uh, referring to what I said uh, earlier to the Turks and to all the others who were all, all of them are there to help. Australians, Americans, the Chinese. So we are not anymore the, the Europeans alone to help. Because I remember in the hearing, commit, uh, hearing session at the, uh, at the cult, uh, Commission for Culture at the European Parliament two weeks ago, the president of the Culture Commission said it would be a good idea to have a Monet share in Cairo. And I said to her, it's a very good idea. We have to be present in the largest Arab university of the Arab world in Cairo. We have to be there. But there is already an American university in Cairo. There is no European university in Cairo. So the exchange of culture to be present in, a, in an university with 250,000 students and young people, 250,000 students, and an increasing quality of education, more than 51% are women coming out of these universities. So the situation of uh, development and, and minorities and, and women issues are totally different and we don't know all these elements uh, uh, today. We have to inform ourselves much more on this cultural relation. I saw to the rating of universities on business schools and, 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 uh, and uh, science and medicine the Alexandra University is better quoted than, the, than uh, the Ghent University, who is one of our best universities, on medicine, medical studies. So it's interesting to see how these things are linked. And so that will be uh, a major project for the coming three years with the different countries in the Mediterranean world. And in the first place, uh, we would, could uh, conclude with some recommendation, recommendations from our side uh, uh, in a real strategy of cultural policy for the external affairs is really a must. And the cultural cooperation with countries outside Europe will really help on a more structural way of a dialogue between Europe and these partner countries. It will help in the bilateral uh, policies, the re regional policies, on an horizontal way in that soft power we can bring. And it's very important that in the way today uh, uh, regional investments has to be coming, being coming in a consolidated way. We have to work together inside Europe. We can have a, a more value and we can work because always the idea of independency, we can really have to, together with uh, cultural diplomacy and public diplomacy, we can have common uh, joining efforts to be successful in that uh, uh, work we have to do with Europe and the rest of the world. So thank you for your attention, uh, and, uh, and I hope we can step by step 
on an homeopathic way, both are here in Brussels, but all the import art centers in Europe uh, be uh, joining the effort to make this project happen. Thank you. Thank you very much for definitely a highlight uh, and a commitment address. I just want to tell fortunate we didn't meet each other earlier. Here I am founding the Institute for Belgian Diplomacy, and we only meet now. But, and clearly, uh, we share many of the same visions in terms of the great potential culture has uh, to serve as a vehicle for diplomacy. Thank you very much for the lecture. Be happy to receive questions and comments from uh, all of you. Please, let's start in the front. And maybe we'll collect two or three together. Um, my name is Antoine Dabai. And I come from uh, a cultural depa uh, department from Kosovo. <coughs> My question is more practically. Uh, we all know that uh, cultural diplomacy is um, um, is exchanging for from ideas and and making them happen with uh, using um, soft power as an instrument. Um, during uh, this conference, we heard uh, different um, opinions, maybe some somehow uh, uh, controversial opinions from different views, and um, with a little bit uh, more political touch to uh, this was very nice from you that you uh, clearly definite a little bit more what uh, cultural diplomacy can do. Um, um, my question is, um, uh, today, uh, Mr. Sabatil in, uh, said, today we are speaking about um, European culture, European diplomacy, and um, how about speaking or creating a um, central European cultural society, maybe, who could have, uh, we should have uh, more credibility and influence to all these different mechanisms who could deal with, with these problems and barricades that artists have to express, to explore, to, to promote themselves everywhere. Maybe an, an initiative or, or something like that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ursula, I'm from Poland. Um, I actually, um, like your lecture, uh, your, your, your talk right now, it's, uh, like it's very closely re related to the talk we had earlier about the um, intercultural dialogue of Europe, you know, like an like uh, EU perspective on this. And you've also uh, mentioned the um, very obvious imbalance of the exchange, which of course is about students coming from other non-European countries to Europe to study, rather than the European students going out uh, abroad, you know, to, to actually study and learn about uh, the, you know, other countries. So actually, um, I would like to make this time my question a bit more specific. For example, in the context of the of the Arab um, Spring and you know the democratization process, there kind of you know reconstruction, rebuilding, progress, etc. For example, what sort of um, like what is the the actually the EU agenda on this? Like, is it going to be that there's going to be like a ma you know a massive number of scholarships funding educations from some young students from that countries to come to Europe and actually learn in Europe or how about actually you know doing the other way around like you know sending funds to you know improve the quality of a couple of departments in some universities at which European students could get a quality education like are there like any ideas that this prevented to kind of make it you know the other way around more to you know equalize this imbalance? Say to, to the first uh, question uh, uh, exchanging ideas uh, on, on, a, on a high level, I think that uh, a good. Uh, we had recently a, a debate on that, uh, on and maybe one of the best examples outside Bozar is the Humboldt Forum in Berlin, a type of uh, of platforms. I think that important that we try to uh, to the next uh, European cultural program. Uh, uh, who has to be approved by the Commission in the, in, in the spring next year, I would say the whole debate in 2012 will be on that topic. And as we know, what was the, pro the former program, uh, that in my opinion, besides an increasing budget, is also to find a way how these different platforms of dialogue in Europe can be related as, and, and having more bridges uh, to speak with each other. 
and uh, it's a reality still, and it's the reality of the summit. We have the European summit today. We see still a gap between a certain leader countries, but also a, a big gap, in my experience, with the 10 new member states, with the Baltic states, the Balkan, uh, even what happened with Greece. We need a better integration, and for that we need to have uh, more structured platforms. The European Union, if we do well our job and a good lobby to the, uh, the, um, the authorities, to the parliament, uh, and that the texts are well adapted, There's in, there is some funds to create better platforms, not networks. Networks is in the disciplines. Uh, you have the theater networks, you have uh, opera networks, museum networks, but it's much more to do with your question is on the reflection. Uh, and, and, and that Humboldt University uh, in, in Berlin and, and the German authorities decided we want to create in Berlin a forum who will be an exchange inside Europe in all the different uh, cultural levels and with outside Europe related to the cultural heritage of Europe and its different movements through the whole history, but also to the different movements what happens outside Europe. And they're looking around on which other structures are in that multidisciplinary way, intercultural, multicultural, all these different way of doing in a matrix. We are much too much structured in a vertical way. Operas, museums, you see something. Yeah? When you see the Louvre in Paris, they do, they invite curators outside, they invite musicians to have a dialogue, but it's very limited. It's very limited. And so it's important that we stimulate and other institutions who is, in my opinion, reference, but they, do, they don't do it enough. Uh, they, it's uh, uh, it's uh, the Gumbenkan Foundation in uh, Lisbon. They opened a new platform in Paris. But even there, uh, as a civil society initiative, it's too much Chinese walls between all the disciplines. So the what we are looking for is more the horizontal way of looking and not the, the disciplines uh, as independent islands around. So it's a, it's a, it's a real challenge. Then to the uh, Arab world uh, and education and, and research and science, uh, we are really an art center and we are not an university. I'm always dreaming to lead tomorrow maybe an university because the same thing, uh, I see the same thing and, as in the art fields not enough working together. Universities is the same reality, maybe even more bureaucratic way organized than the art world. So uh, I would say that in, uh, uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not in the right place to speak about because Belgium is the one of the lowest numbers of students who even try to take opportunity of the Erasmus opportunities, the Belgians uh, children like to stay home by their parents and not to go and, and that's the difficulty to go out of Europe. I say that to my four children, the future is outside Europe. You have to go and discover, you have to take the risk to go out, to study uh, another place. And that's when I would say my first mission and to really to stimulate that way of doing. Uh, but we have to create these opportunities, fellowships, we, do, we don't do it enough. Uh, and I hope that, uh, that the European uh, Commission, besides uh, if spending a billion, because it's a budget, we spend it like in, uh, for the three countries, Libya, Tunisia, and Cairo, uh, Egypt, a very important budget is spent for the democratization process to the civil society, but it's still too much linked to infrastructure development, uh, 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 medical support than really the level of research, science, and exchange with universities. And when I'm hearing diplomats from the other side of the in the Arab world, and Lila Shahid even yesterday, it's visas. They have the opportunity to leave the country, and that's and then you have the very delicate discussion of the brain drain you have with the United States. So the problem how to balance that students can come here and go back. To, to build their, their, their country, to be stuck there with the local reality. So it's so important that migration uh, lines, making that we help, but it's for the local community. It's knowing that 
uh, the Arab world inside. Today, they have given so many opportunities to do it there. I was visiting the new universities of the Emirates, uh, the Doha University side with the American universities. It, it was, I'm very impressed to see the high quality. We don't need any more Europe sometimes for these things. We can, but at the same time, there's an interest. The focus will always to the American universities, China or Mexico. We saw with the borderline problems between Mexico and America that recent years, Mexican students are more coming to our universities, not only to Spain, all over Europe. Eh? So you see also a good movement. So we can offer also a different way of education. It's complementarity with the American universities and, and, and the other systems. So I think uh, having the exchange and the experience in both, I would always be in favor. But it's to do with economic development, political issues, and cultural issues, to accept that students can come here, and that's a very important element, to have the visa, very pragmatic, have a visa to come here and study, and to be trustful that you'll come here and can going back. Excellent. Well, on that note, so ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask you to please join me in expressing our gratitude to Mr. Paul Dujardin. Thank you very much.